Hey everyone, Biotech Girl here. Now I am in the Visual Studio Code uh, program because I programmed a program that can turn alphanumerical information into a DNA sequence. And one of the first questions that you may have right now is why would you want to store data into DNA? Well, A, because Microsoft is already doing it and it should be good. And B, because DNA can last for thousands of years. So it means that in the long term, it is one of the best ways in which we can store digital or any other sort of data. And well, C, because DNA is very compact, so it is pretty much at the atomic level um, and we can store petabytes of information into a single gram of DNA, which gives us a lot of advantages over other um, storages, uh, type of storage. So I'm going to briefly explain, not in a lot of detail, this program because I'll be also talking about the other one that I created, which is a little bit more complex. Um, so this one only takes like an input that can be a number or it can be a letter, and it then turns it into zeros and ones using this kind of equivalence, which is called UTF-8. And the eight is because we are going to be arranging, for example, I'm inventing this, but let's imagine that a equals I don't know like one two three four five six seven eight let's imagine that a equals these kind of uh, binary sequence so that's why it is called UTF-8 because this is a byte so the difference between a byte and a bit is that let me write this as a comment so one two three four five six seven eight that is a byte and then a bit is this so that is a bit and so UTF-8 basically allows us to have this equivalence between different alphanumerical um, icons or elements and then turn them into a binary sequence that computers can read. And so here is the other part of the program which tells the computer, hey, 00, zero equals A, zero 01 equals C, and so on. And this is just like an example because I wanted A to be 00, zero but actually A could be zero 01 and C could be 11 one, and there would be absolutely no problem. However, it is important that you know that some researchers have found that this is not actually the smartest way to store data into DNA just because DNA sequences and D DNA sequencing and DNA synthesizing um, can have a lot of errors if we find ourselves with like a sequence of a lot of A's or um, if, we, if we find like a lot of uh, a very long sequence of DNA. So there can be a lot of problems. And finally, we have um, the separation into bits as it says here. I iterate through that kind of, um, through, through the... Um, through the list that I already had, and then I turn it into a DNA sequence by uh, adding like the equivalence. So the computer already knows that A equals zero, 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 so it adds that to my list called DNA. Finally, I print it just because I want to print it. Uh, there are other ways to do it. And you're going to see that later because here we could have like a very short text, but if we were managing larger amounts of information, we wouldn't want to print this into the console, into the Terminator ter terminal because uh, it would be like a lot of information. And well, this final thing is just about joining um, the DNA letters so they don't have like any spaces in between. But now I'm going to go ahead and show you what this looks like. So I'm going to uh, like write a very short uh, sequence of letters, which is going to be like my full name, which is Anna Sofia Sanchez Hernandez. So that is it. I click enter, and there you go. That's how it it like how my name is written into DNA. And if I wanted, I could also like uh, print the how was it uh, binary. So if I wanted, I could also click on binary. Just let me start this again. So hello world. Let's see hello world and here we have that the binary sequence is pretty much the double of the dna sequence so there is where you can see um, that dna data storage is a little bit more um, efficient in terms of like storing a uh, compressing information now i'm going to show you uh, how the other program turns images into a dna sequence so I really hope you don't just go ahead and copy my code because it really took a while to figure this out. 
and it's not that I care if like you copy the code and use it like but what I'm telling you is that I really got to learn how it is like to figure things out with this project and it felt good you know like going through all of those websites and then discovering like what the actual solution was thanks to a guy who randomly posted a YouTube video that helped uh, thousands of people with the problem they had. Um, but anyways, like here is the program that I used in order to turn Im images into DNA. So first I needed to figure out like what are images made up of, how do computers um, actually store images and I discovered that images um, are made up of pixels and pixels uh, are made up of um, values, so color values, and in the majority of cases, these values, if the image is a colored image, then the values are going to be RGB, which stands for red, uh, green, and blue. So these are kind of the most important colors to, to create a full image. And these RGB values are actually numbers, so they can be numbers like, I don't know, 70, 123, and um, those kind of things. So you can actually look it up and, and see like, uh, how, how you, each color is in an RGB value and well um, I needed to then think of how Python could help me to process an image even if Python could process images because I wasn't sure about that and I discovered that there was this pill sort of uh, library module uh, that helps Python basically uh, process images and then I discovered that I could get the RGB values by just using this kind of um, module, I think this kind of function uh, called get data. And then I created a list out of that. And then in that list, I created another list. And maybe there is like a much easier way to do all of this, but I'm just getting, getting started with Python. So please have patience. And then with this other list, I, the thing is that I wanted, like, I wanted to get rid of these characters, you know, like the commas, the things, I don't know what these are called, the braces maybe, and um, the spaces that uh, this list could have. So I iterated through this, I created like a lot of value variables, and after a while I used the same function that I used in the other program uh, that uses UTF-8 in order to turn those um, numbers that are RGB values into a binary sequence. And the reason why I wanted to get rid of all these things is because I didn't want like the UTF-8 uh, thing think that these were values that I wanted to have because it would alter all the purpose of encoding an image into DNA. So then it was pretty much the same thing uh, using the equivalence of DNA and uh, separating it into what I wanted and finally uh, just joining it like in a single string and then a good friend of mine <laughs> who's actually TKS as well showed me that it would be a good idea to create a file a separate file to store the final data because I was having problems with the terminal because it was just a lot of information and yeah so now I'm going to go ahead and open this other file, like intermediate one. I'm not going to explain that uh, because it's pretty much the same thing. But here I have like the, the path for the image that I want to use. Um, so it uh, tells me, well, insert the name of the file. And that's what I'm going to do. Just let me see something. Um, and yeah, well, supposedly it already should have created like, um, yeah, this kind of files which are the result this is all the information that a single tiny image and significant image stores so these are all the zeros and ones and as you can see it's like a lot of information and you're going to probably see that in dna it's also a lot of information but just a little bit less so take a look at this aces g's and t's and there we go like I know it looks like a lot, um, but yeah, that's how I use Python in order to store data into DNA. And um, yeah, hope you learned something new, hope you enjoyed and hope you store your data into a bacteria or a plant or a 3D printed object or something.